Hi everybody, welcome to Elementary Classical Mechanics, the subject where observing the universe suggests new mathematical and computational approaches that can literally transform our way of modeling and predicting any aspect of the world. Welcome back to the second lecture for Chapter 5. And now we're going to start going through the list of force functions that I gave you last time and solving Newton's equation in one dimension for those specific forces. Okay, so we're going to go down this list and the first four should be fairly straightforward, but it will teach you some really good mathematical technique where it's possible to get a bit sloppy. So, to begin with, let's consider the case where the force is a constant, F. And this is Newton's equation here. And what we're going to do, the right-hand side F is a constant, we're going to integrate it twice. In fact, that's often said. The way to solve differential equations is to integrate them, that, but it's not always straightforward to <laughs> integrate them in the way you believe or think. Okay, so these are the initial conditions. We integrate once, f is a constant, that's an easy integral. So the endpoints of, in of integration are from the initial time t0 to an arbitrary time t. And I don't want to confuse the limit of integration with the dummy variable over which we are integrating, so I change that variable to tau. It's probably something that you've seen done in your calculus classes. It takes a while to sink in. Once we've done that integral, it's very easy. We get this expression for the velocity as a function of time, depending on the initial velocity and this linear in time function. We integrate one more time. And we get this expression that maybe you've seen in some context before. So the position is the initial position S0 plus the initial velocity times t minus t0 plus this term that's quadratic in t minus t0. Okay, now we're going to consider the case where f is solely a function of time. Now, everything is going to be the same, except we're going to have to carry along this integral on the right-hand side because f is now a function of time, and the, it has to be integrated over whatever this explicit function is. So performing the first integration gives us this. Compare with the previous case. And the second integration gives us this. And you can see how if f were a constant, it would reduce to the previous case. Okay, now let's look. This is, a, this is kind of a cool case. f is only a function of velocity, s dot. Well, look. Here's Newton's equations. This looks almost like a first-order equation for ds dt. And in fact, if we change the variables and let u be ds dt, plug that back in to the equation, lo and behold, this is what we get. Well, we can integrate that. Well, we can, we can write it in an integral form. We can integrate certainly the right-hand side. And potentially, well, we could, we could integrate the left-hand side depending on the form of, of the force, f of u. You know, we can't integrate any expression of this form. But if we could integrate it, we would get an implicit expression for u of t. If we could solve that for u of t, we would then end up with a solution 
u of t, which remember in our original substitution is ds dt, and then we would um, integrate that one more time, and we get the solution s of t. Okay, that's a good place to stop right now. The next case is a really important case that we're going to see a lot of throughout this course. So I'll pick up with that next time. Bye.